Many have sought to understand the natural laws that govern our universe. Some say that there are 12, while others, like the great Hermes Trismegistus, know that there are seven. Hermes, also known as Thoth, explains the foundational laws of our reality with his seven hermetic principles. In this video, we will dive into what these principles are all about and how we can all use them as a source of inspiration and empowerment. But, before we dive into the seven hermetic principles, allow us to first give a brief introduction into the acclaimed master of masters himself. The seven principles are the foundation of Hermeticism, a branch of spiritual philosophy, date back as early as the first century AD. Although many believe that they go much further back into the far reaches of time. The seven principles were outlined by the famed master of masters, Hermes Trismegistus, who is believed to have written the Emerald Tablets and the Corpus Hermeticum. Two very highly influential and ancient teachings. His work would go on to influence both ancient Greek and Egyptian cultures, with both deifying him as a god of wisdom. In Greece, he was called Hermes, in Egypt, Thoth, and in the Americas, Quetzalcoatl. He was known in his time as a great master of the universe and is said to have lived for thousands of years. Over time, the seven hermetic principles were passed down by word of mouth from teacher to student, and eventually, one day in the early 20th century, the teachings were compiled into a book known as the Kibalion, written by the three initiates which is where we will begin. As we now dive into the seven hermetic principles. The seven hermetic principles. The principles of truth are seven. He who knows these, understandingly, possesses the magic key, before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open. The Kibalion. The seven hermetic principles, upon which the entire hermetic philosophy is based, are as follows. 1. The principle of mentalism. 2. The principle of correspondence. 3. The principle of vibration. 4. The principle of polarity. 5. The principle of rhythm. 6 the principle of cause and effect. 7. The principle of gender. These seven principles will be discussed and explained as we proceed. Number 1. The principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. The Kibalion. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the terms of the material universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit which in itself is unknowable and undefinable, but which may be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite, living mind. It also explains that all the universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe, as a whole, and in its parts or units, has its existence in the mind of the all, in which mind, we live and move, and have our being. This principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental, 
and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention, and which, without such explanation, are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. An understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and to apply the same to his well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is empowered to apply, intelligently, the great mental laws, instead of using them in a haphazard manner. With the master key in his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and etheric temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. This principle explains the true nature of energy, power, and matter, and why and how all these are subordinate to the mastery of mind. One of the old hermetic masters once wrote, long ages ago, he who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path to mastery. And these words are as true today as they were the time they were first written. Without this master key, mastery is impossible, and the student knocks, in vain, at the many doors of the temple. Number 2. The Principle of Correspondence As above, so below, as below, so above. The Kibalion This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of existence. The old hermetic axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many complex paradoxes and hidden secrets of nature. There are planes that exist beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. The ancient Hermetists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught. Just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements, a firm understanding of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown. By studying the monad, he understands the archangel. Number 3. The Principle of Vibration Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. The Kibalion This principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion, everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. These are all facts which modern science endorses and which each new scientific discovery verifies. And yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt. This principle explains that the differences between various manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter. All is vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position on the scale. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest. 
Just as a rapidly moving wheel appears to be motionless, and at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibrations are so low as to also seem to be at rest. Between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of vibration. From corpuscle and electron, atom and molecule, to worlds and universes, everything is in constant vibratory motion. This also remains true on the various planes of energy and force, which are all but varying degrees of vibration, and also on the mental planes, whose states also depend upon vibrations and even on to the spiritual planes. An understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas enables hermetic students to control their own mental vibrations as well as those of others. The masters also apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways. He who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power. Number four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites, like and unlike are the same, opposites are identical in nature, yet different in degree, extremes meet, all truths are but half-truths, all paradoxes may be reconciled. The Kibalion. This principle embodies the truth that everything is dual, everything has two poles, everything has its pair of opposites, all of which are old hermetic axioms. It explains the old paradoxes that have perplexed so many, which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, yet different in degree. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet, everything is, and isn't, at the same time. All truths are but half-truths. Every truth is half-false. There are two sides to everything, and so on and so forth. It explains that in everything, there are two poles, or opposite aspects, and that opposites are really only the two extremes of the same thing, with many varying degrees between them. To illustrate, hot and cold, although opposites, are really the same thing, the differences consisting merely of degrees of the same thing. Look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat ends and cold begins. There is no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms hot and cold simply indicate varying degrees of the same thing, and that same thing which manifests as heat and cold is merely a form, variety, and rate of vibration. So hot and cold are simply the two poles of that which we call heat, and the phenomena attendant thereupon are manifestations of the principle of polarity. The same principle manifests in the case of light and darkness, which are the same thing, the difference consisting of varying degrees between the two poles of the phenomena. Where does darkness end? And where does light begin? What is the difference between large and small? Between hard and soft? Between black and white? Between sharp and dull? Between noise and quiet? Between high and low? Between positive and negative? The principle of polarity explains these paradoxes and no other principle can supersede it. The same principle operates on the mental plane. For example, consider love and hate, two very powerful mental states that are seemingly different. And yet, there are degrees of love 
and degrees of hate. There is a middle point in which we use the terms like or dislike, which often blend into each other so gradually that sometimes we are at a loss as to know whether we like, dislike, or neither. And all are simply degrees of the same spectrum. It is possible to transmute the vibrations of hate to the vibrations of love in one's own mind and in the minds of others. Applying the principle of polarity in this way is considered to be of the most importance by the hermitist. This is accomplished with the use of the will along with use of the hermetic formulas. The hermitist understands the art of transmuting vibratory states by means of an application of the principle of polarity. In short, the art of polarization becomes a phase of mental alchemy. Known and practiced by the ancient and modern hermetic masters, an understanding of the principle will enable you to change your own polarity as well as that of others. But only if you will devote the time and study necessary to master the art. Number 5. The Principle of Rhythm Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The Kibalion. This principle embodies the truth that in everything there is manifested a measured motion to and fro, a flow and inflow, a swing backward and forward, a pendulum-like movement, a tide-like ebb and flow, a high tide and low tide between the two poles which exist in accordance with the principle of polarity described a moment ago. There is always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and sinking. The principle of rhythm is no more apparent than in the affairs of the universe. Suns, worlds, men, animals, mind, energy, and matter. This law is manifest in the creation and destruction of worlds in the rise and fall of nations, in the life of all things, and most importantly, within the various mental states of man. The Hermitists have grasped this principle, finding its universal application, and have also discovered certain means to overcome its effects in themselves by the use of the appropriate formulas and methods. They apply the mental law of neutralization. They cannot annul the principle or cause it to cease its operation, but they have learned how to escape its effects upon themselves to a certain degree, depending upon the mastery of the principle. They have learned how to use it instead of being used by it. In this and similar methods is the art of the hermitists. The master of hermetics polarizes himself at the point at which he desires to rest and then neutralizes the rhythmic swing of the pendulum, which would tend to carry him to the other pole. All individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery do this to a certain degree, more or less unconsciously. But the master does this consciously, with will and intent, and attains a degree of poise and mental firmness. This principle and that of polarity have been closely studied by the hermitists and the methods of counteracting, neutralizing, and using them form an important part of the hermetic mental alchemy. Number 6. 
The principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens in accordance to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. The Kibalian. This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect and an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law. Nothing ever merely happens. There is no such thing as chance. While there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher planes dominating the lower planes. Yet, nothing ever entirely escapes the law. The Hermetists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect to a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers instead of effects. The masses of people are carried along, obedient to environment, to the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves. Heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their own moods, characters, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers. Instead of pawns, they help to play the game of life, instead of being played and moved about by outward forces and environments. They use the principle instead of being its tools. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. In this statement, there is condensed a wealth of hermetic knowledge. Let him read, who can. Number 7. The Principle of Gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. The Kibalian. This principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything. The masculine and feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only of the physical plane, but of the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex, and on the higher planes, it takes higher forms, but the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental or spiritual, is possible without this principle. An understanding of its laws will shed light on many things that have perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything and every person contains the two elements. For this great principle, within it, him or her. Every male thing has the female element as well. Every female also contains the male principle. If you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation, and regeneration, you must understand and study this hermetic principle. It contains the solution of many mysteries of life. However, we will caution you that this principle has no reference to the many of the base, pernicious, and degrading, and lustful theories, teachings, and practices, which are often taught under fanciful titles, and which are a profaned prostitution of the great natural principle of gender. Such base revivals of the ancient and infamous forms of phallicism 
have a distinct tendency to ruin mind, body and soul, and the hermetic philosophy has ever sounded the warning note against these degraded teachings, which tend toward lust, licentiousness, and perversion of nature's principles. If you seek such teachings, you must go elsewhere for them. Hermeticism contains nothing for you along these lines. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. Well, there. These were the seven hermetic principles. The universe runs on natural laws. When we take the time to understand these laws, we can use them. We can leverage them. We can use the knowledge to live better lives. And since the very beginning of civilization, the wisest of us have been united by this pursuit of discovering what these natural laws are, so we can learn from them and use them to gain control over our lives. Each of these principles exists in nature and applies directly to our mental, physical, and spiritual states. Having awareness of these principles and how they intertwine with one another gives us an understanding of our own patterns, what holds influence over us, and how we can use these principles to gain mastery of our lives. We hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give the video a like. And if you are new, be sure to subscribe for more content. Until next time, we thank you for watching, and always live in the love and light of the One.